is blessed. If you are not blessed, you are just a call away to Jesus. I invite each and every one to like, share, and subscribe the link. We are welcoming you to the Let's Talk About Him campaign. If you have not been online as yet, you need to be here. We are asking you to share. Call someone up, your co-worker, your friend, your family member, whoever it may be, right across the world. We are here praising God, and we invite you to sing with us as we continue to sing this lovely song, Hold Me Close, Hold Me Close. Lord, unveil my eyes, let me see you face to face the knowledge of your love as you live in me Lord up Lord renew Lord renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life where by the power of your love Hold me close Let your love surround me Bring me there Draw me
John the Revelator saw the end time church, he saw it as an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them who dwell on the earth at the very closing moment of earth's history. Whether it is in the West Jamaica Conference or the East Jamaica Conference, whether it is in the Central Jamaica Conference or the North Jamaica Conference, or closer year, the Northeast Jamaica Conference, this is the Advent message beaming throughout the length and breadth of the island of Jamaica to the ends of the earth. Welcome to those of you who are joining us on NCU Radio 91.1, 91.3, and 91.5 on your FM band. To those on NCU Television via Flow Television Network Channel 188 and 617. To those who are watching us on WCCN, Cornwall Communications. Bless TV and its 13 affiliate network cable stations across the island, including CTL, NCS, Starcom, Quest in Lucy, St. Thomas Cable, Satcom, Astra Portland and Black Rock, Intech in Buff Bay, Gemini in Anato Bay, Cable One in Highgate, Pro Cable in Stony Hill, West Star in Trelawney, or Com Cable in Grange Hill. Welcome to Let's Talk About Him. I Follow Jesus, Jamaica Union Conference's online evangelistic series, the first of its kind, brought, brought to you by all the fields within the Jamaica Union Conference territory. At this time, I want to know where you are from, so just in the chat, tell me. Which conference or which location, which parish you're actually watching us from, if you're from the islands, uh, from within Jamaica rather, and if you're from the islands in the Caribbean, then just tell us which island you are from. Welcome to our friends in the Perrine SDA Church in Miami, Florida, and also our friends also in the South England Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. To those of you who are consistently watching us from Ontario and other areas in Canada, welcome to this the Let's Talk About Him digital online evangelistic series. The family is a critical plank of society. It begins when a man takes unto himself, as Jesus said, a woman. And the family structure is to be one which helps individuals to grow emotionally, socially, physically, spiritually, and of course mentally. But not every marriage either begins or ends with those end in mind. And to this evening, we have someone to share with us her own experience in her own marriage as much as she possibly can. And we have with us in studio, Patricia Cunningham Francis. Welcome to Let's Talk About Him. Thank you. Hi. All right, you can look at me. They'll fix that in the meantime. You're looking lovely in the pink. Oh, thank you. Supporting the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes? Always. Yes. So, Patricia, tell me, when you were a child growing up, what did you envision marriage to be? A beautiful uni union between a man and a woman, as the Bible would have stated it, that it should be until death do us part. What, 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 did you, were you a Christian at that time? It, what, no, no, no. My partner and I wasn't a Christian at the time. We weren't even Seventh Day Adventists. So tell us a little now. How did you get married to him? Uh, what led? Give us a little bit of the love story right there. Oh, when I um, when I met my my partner, I think um, <laughs> it was the, one of those fairy tale, you know, the man of your dreams, the mm -hmm. tall, dark, and handsome, and. I was saying, yes, yeah, so this is the one. This is the one I want to spend the rest of my life with. You met on a bus? Yes, we did. <laughs> Come, tell, us, tell us about the meeting on the bus, how that love, how that love struck up, you know, on a bus. Um, I was coming from school. Um, I was at the Michael University at the time, and I was coming from school. I was single at the time, and I remember talking to the Lord that I am ready for a meet. And I, I think I'm ready to, to get married, to find somebody and to start a life with. And then, come on, tell us, the, I want to hear the bus meeting part, start the story. Uh, we, we, we met, um, I guess, common attractions and, yes. and he likes me, me like him. Yes. We, we courted, we talked for hours. Um, Persons remember um, late night talk, the, mm -hmm. those long hours of talking 
Free nights. Free nights. Right. Digicel free nights right. and those things. Yes. yes. We use a lot of that. Yes. <laughs> So you were married in which year? That was leading up to the to, 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 to the wedding day. When which year did, did you? Um, we tie got them up? married in December 2013. 2013. Yes. Oh, and I'm sure that was a happy day for you. It was a beautiful day. Yeah. Tell us how things turned out between 2013 and now. What? Um, between 2013, we had a beautiful. We have a beautiful son. A very bright and sparkling sun. Um, but things took a turn in 2018 when um, he, he told me that um, I should go on with my life because he have decided to go on with his. And um, at that point, he, he, um, he told me via mouth and he went into our marital bedroom and Pack all my stuff and put them in the children's room. You're joking, right? I'm not joking. Wow. Um, when that happened, I think I laughed for a week because it was I was in disbelief because I couldn't believe that this man that I love, um, this man that <clears throat> I have given so much, I've dedicated myself to, I've decided to call it quits. Um, I went through a series of depression. I was um, diagnosed as being severely depressed. Um, I lost weight. You can imagine because I wasn't eating. Um, I remembered sleep was never my friend anymore because I remember nights when I would just lie and lay looking up in the ceiling because I wasn't sleeping. Um, I lost my hair. It came out in clumps. Um, so the depression was really, really bad. It was really bad. Um, it, it took a turn for the worse. So I endured that for one year while praying, while fasting, while talking to the Lord because I believe that my, my marriage was ordained by the Lord. It was put together by the Lord and I wasn't going to give up without a fight. So I, I prayed, I fasted, I asked for the, the help of the church we see counseling. We, we, I did everything. Let's say there was no stone left unturned. I did everything. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, that was when he decided that it was, that was it. And he left the home. The, the, the emotional turmoil on you is perhaps unspeakable. And maybe not being able to express. Where did you, along the journey up to this point find a hope where did where did you find a glimmer of light all right um when he left in 2019 everything started to fall in apart we bought a house together um he ended up taking out additional loan on the house so when he left the light went the water went um the taxes went i will i am at the point of almost losing the house um, so I remember I got really desperate to the point where, um, I had to be taking antidepressants and sleeping pills just to, to have my mind just to turn off. And, um, I remember one, one, one Sunday I got so bad that I, I, I started to argue with the Lord. Yes, I did with tears and on my knees and I was like, Lord, you said you are going to take care of me. You said that everything is going to work out. You said you, you have seen my tears, you have heard my prayers and it is going to work out. And 2020, it is not working out. Everything is falling apart. And I remember I I hollered, I never cry, <laughs> my ball. And uh, when I finished crying and telling the Lord my mind, as we Jamaican would say, I rose up and I said, Lord, I still trust you. Do your will. Um, as I stated before that I was losing the house, so I am trying to regain my house. So 
by regaining my house require me to do a lot of stuff, spend a lot of money. And I was having difficulty finding the money. And then when I look, the, the Lord ended up sending persons, my church members and other persons, to come at my aid. And I was able to pay all that money, find all the documents, and submitted them to the re relevant person. But what I really want to know is how did you make the shift in the midst of all of this from the turmoil to spiritual health? Where, when, where in all of this did you find Christ? I found him that day when I was on my knees crying and cursing him out. Seriously, yes. I found him there. Because put it to the Lord. I, put, I just told him what was on my yes. mind. Yes. And it, even though I was there in anguish and crying, I could still feel him there with me saying, I am here. And that's the point when I wake up and I, when I got up and I was saying, Lord, I am going to live. I shall not die. I am going to live. I trust you. And so just, just, just to close, because I just want to take that 30 seconds. I'm going to give you 30 seconds just to look in the camera, speak to those individuals who are looking forward to marriage. Um, not to depress them. We want them to have hope because their experience will not necessarily be their experience. So just say a 30 seconds um, comment to them as we close. I still believe in marriage. I still believe in the bonds of marriage. I still believe in what the Lord says that marriage is supposed to be. But I can say no. I understand what it means to wait upon the Lord and be of good courage. Trust the Lord. If you are seeking a mate, if you are seeking a partner, find the Lord. He will never lead you down a wrong path. Amen. Thank you so very much, Patricia Cunningham Francis. She's now a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, specifically at the Rollington, Rollington Town, Rollington SDA Church. We're going to throw now to Asana Praise for our theme song. This is Let's Talk About Him. the popular things just tell me about the king of kings don't tell me about the things of the world but tell me about my god and his word jesus christ let's talk about him let's talk about him because he's the king of kings and lord of lords hey hey let's talk let's talk about let's talk about him Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed as we talk to our Maker and King. Our Heavenly Father, tonight we are most grateful to you even for the portal of prayer. We are indebted to you for life. We're happy to know that you have kept us 
since the week began up to this point. And we are here to magnify and to glorify your name. We put this evangelistic series under your care and under your, your stewardship. We pray, O oh God, that you'll be with the evangelist. In a marked way, be with the varying fields and the individuals and our guests who are watching at this time. We pray that you will rescue souls who are perishing and even those who are on the devil's death list. We ask, dear God, that you will ride into the storms that are waging in the lives of many. And we pray that you'll put the devil's plans and schemes to naught. We thank you for your hand in the lives of many. And we ask in a mighty way that your Holy Spirit will empower your manservant who will deliver a word of hope, of comfort, with clarity and with simplicity. This is my asking with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, everybody's worried about Adam Bum, but no one seems worried about a devilish will come better. Set the house in order, maybe coming soon. I feel it like a Adam Bum when he comes, when he comes. Well, everybody's worried about the hell and bomb but no one seems worried about the day my lord should come better set the house in order maybe coming soon it's like a hell and bomb when he comes when he comes it was 1945 oh. usa became very live oh. 1949 oh. america the country across the line oh. Every same time, people start worrying all over the land. Oh. Even those people over in Japan, God holy oh. light is gonna rain down fire, oh. rain down fire from the sky. Oh. You surely know what is a rainbow sign. Oh. Won't be water, but fire next time. Everybody's worrying about the hell and bomb, but no one seems worried about the day my Lord should come. You better. Set the rush in order, maybe coming soon. It's like a hell and bum when he comes, when he comes. Don't you worry, just bear in mind. Oh. Trust in Jesus all the time. Oh. He'll give you peace and a joy divine. Oh. When he's told he lies, it's gonna rain down fire. Oh. Rain down fire from the sky. Oh. You surely know what is a rainbow sign. Oh. Won't be water, but Everybody's worried about the hell and bum, but no one seems worried about the day my Lord should come. You better set the house in order, maybe coming soon. It's like a hell and bum when he comes, when he comes. Well, everybody's worried about the hell and bum. But no one seems worried about the day my Lord should come. You better set the house in order. Maybe coming soon. And he'll hit like a hell and bum when he comes, when he comes, when he comes. For this series, the Jamaica Union Conference engaged in 40 days of prayer and fasting. Each morning, the Jamaica Union Conference is also engaged across the entire union in prayer. But this evening, we are setting aside a time for you to make your requests known to the Lord. And so, in the chat, I see a request from Sharon Nemhard, who says, Good night, 14-year-old Ricketts from St. Anne is suffering from cancer of the mouth, and she needs help and prayers. We empathize with you. And this evening, we have Pastor Robin Williams, Robert Williams, from the Central Jamaica Conference, who is going to lift up the requests that have been placed here in the chat and elsewhere to the Lord in prayer. The numbers are on your screen. Even now, you can send in your request as Pastor Williams lifts up our request to the God 
who hears and answers prayer. At this time, let us assume an attitude of prayer as we come to our Father. And so, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We come to you, Lord, because you have invited us to come. We come to you because while we have many questions, you have all the answers. While we have much problem, you have all the solution. We come to you because you're always there and you always care. We come to you, Heavenly Father, because we have none other to turn to but to Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, God, as we come, we are recognizing that our sin would separate us from you. We are fully cognizant of the fact that the enemy would want us to doubt you and to doubt your words. But we come, O oh God, asking you to help our unbelief. You see all the requests that is in the chat. You see the unmentioned requests. We are grateful, O oh God, that you have given us the opportunity that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Even as we come to the throne of grace, we come expecting great things because you are an awesome God. You are a God that never fails. You are a God that meets your children at our point of need. And you do exceedingly abundantly above all that which we may ask or think. And so even as we come tonight, O oh God, we present the request before you. There are many and some are seeming overwhelming. But we know, O oh God, that you are not overwhelmed because you are such an awesome God. Requests have been placed for those who are sick. We remember Shevan, O oh God, where we are told that the doctors cannot find the solution or why he is so sick. But we are thankful that you are still the great physician. We are thankful that you have never lost the case. We are thankful, O oh God, that you are already there by his bedside and you have the remedy for his situation. And so, O oh God, we ask that as you intervene and he encounter you, that he will have a testimony out of his experience. We are mindful, O oh God, of this young lady with the cancer in her mouth. We have seen in the time past that you have intervened and you have spoken to cancer and cancer had to step back. Tonight again, O oh God, we pray that you will intervene in her life, O oh God, that she will have a testimony to glorify you because the great physician have attended to her. We have seen many other requests of sickness, O oh God. We are thankful that you are on your ward right Round now, you're on your own round now, and you're touching, and your healing grace is flowing through this medium. We're thankful, oh God, that you are going to give your children testimonies after testimony as you bring healing and restoration in their life. We are mindful of mothers and fathers who have sent in requests asking for prayer for their children. Some have gone wayward, but oh God, we pray that you'll bring them back like you bring the prodigal son. We pray God that you'll pull them with that strong cord of love. The enemy will have entangled them in all sort of problem, but God, we pray that you'll break the chain and set somebody free. Give a mother a word to rejoice. Give a father a word to rejoice that they will celebrate that thee which was gone astray has now come back. We pray for broken homes, oh God. We pray for families that have no financial background. They have given up because they don't see any hope. But we are thanking you, oh God, that you are still the God of hope. We thank you what you have in store for your children tonight. We thank you that you are turned up in many homes, in many hearts, and you are going to bring the healing and the restoration that is necessary. And so, oh God, as your children listen in anticipation, we pray that you will not disappoint them in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you will just step in as King of kings and Lord of lords. Beat back the plans of the enemy, we pray. Give your children the deliverance they need. May somebody cry out, I healed. I have gotten a victory. We pray for your blessing. We pray for your healing. We pray for a restoration. We pray, God, that you'll put minds that have gone back 
put them back together. Put minds that have been broken, put them back together. Put hearts that have been broken, put them back together in the name of Jesus. Intervene in your children's situation. May they not be disappointed tonight, but may they have the assurance that God has not only heard, but you have answered their prayer. Increase our faith tonight. May we just trust in you because you have spoken and it was done. You command and it stood fast. You have worked mightily in the past and you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're asking your God, work your work of miracle. We're expecting miracle today, not just yesterday's miracle, but we're expecting miracles today because you live, we can face tomorrow. He and restore bless and bring back the wandering soul strengthen your children tonight we seek your deliverance tonight we seek oh god all those who have put their situation in your hand put their challenges in your hand put their problems in your hand disappoint them not we pray right in king jesus take full control you know the mention request and that which is not mentioned right in oh King Jesus and heal and restore bless and deliver your children surround them with your presence and your power may your Holy Spirit give them the assurance that you're on the case and you never fail anyone and you will never fail tonight we bless your name tonight we honor your name tonight we glorify your name tonight because you are going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that which we may ask we just celebrate victory we celebrate healing. We give you thanks and praise for victory. In the mighty, the marvelous, and the magnificent name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 We want to bless the Lord. Thank him for his servant who has journeyed to be with us to do that special prayer this evening. Pastor Robert Williams from the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. This evening, as we prepare to do our quiz, let me just do the rundown for you from last night. Well, last night, Tuesday night, we actually had 162 winners. 162 winners. Congratulations to all of you. The 19 individuals whose names I will be calling now are individuals who are visiting friends. And you get first class priority here. Ioni White, Susan Coombs, Volrick Higgs, Karen Russell, Krista... Chrysanta Envor, Kayan Troop, Tamoya Bryan, Virgil McFarlane, Shante Stevenson, Alison Anglin Daly, Hyacinth Blackwood, Daniel Jackson, Bridget Dunbar Cole, Dan Isolin Buchanan, Ann Scott, Tanisha Williams, Stephanie Fullerton, and Britannia Williams. The link to the quiz is actually posted in the chat. You can be able to click on it and to participate and engage with us by doing the quiz at this time. It will be terminated when the preacher gets up to speak. To introduce our speaker for this evening, we actually have the Executive Secretary of the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Pastor Linton Williams. August 2003, East Jamaica Conference was very happy to welcome to its workforce Pastor Dane Fletcher. Pastor Fletcher is a dynamic pastor, preacher, and friend. He served in East Jamaica Conference as Youth Ministries Director. He presently serves at the Jamaica Union Conference as the Youth Ministers Director and also the Campus Ministers Director. He's very, very passionate in his preaching, and we have seen that. He's very excited about sharing the word. And he is one who believes and practices what he preaches. He's supported by his dear wife and their son. And I'm very, very certain that we have been blessed by the nightly presentations 
And tonight, God is going to use our evangelist, Pastor Fletcher, to bring to us a word from heaven. I'm sure that we will all be blessed and that our minds will be prepared heavenward so when Jesus comes, we'll all have a place in his eternal kingdom. I present to you Pastor Dane Fletcher. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God and in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for thee. The Lord is coming, are you ready? The Lord is coming, are you ready? Will your heart be right if he comes to joy to know that the Lord is coming and I pray that you will be ready to meet him and I stand boldly before your presence this evening in your company to declare that there is absolutely no other name given among men under the heavens whereby we must be saved and with this assurance we can petition his throne this evening so your heads are bowed your eyes are closed Almighty God, this is your moment. We pray that at this time you will lead and direct this delivery of your word to the extent that my sinful self will not be an obstacle in the way of the cross, but that you will clothe this message in the glory of Jesus and attend it by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is truly amazing. It is the last Wednesday night of this series, which means that come next week, Wednesday, we will not be in this space. So though we may be in a worship space online or otherwise, tonight is our last Wednesday night. It's the last Wednesday night. And I pray that tonight will not be your last night, but that tonight will be your last night not saved in the kingdom of God. I pray that tonight will be your last night being lost and that you will decide to be saved in Jesus. Now, while we look at that, 
I submit to you that we have a good journey to go, so we should rush to the Word of God. Not that we should read it hastily, because we should spend time reading the Word of God. The Word of God comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 27, the 27th chapter of the book of Matthew. Now while we get ready to go to the book of Matthew, I must let you know that we see lots of responses in the chat. And uh, we note particularly the response or the point made by Lisa Dwyer. Lisa Dwyer, we know that you once were a member of the church, but for some reason you have strayed. And we note that you have decided to come back. You have decided to come home in November. And so, Lisa, we are claiming victory and deliverance for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and we would appreciate, Lisa, if you're still online, that you will send your contact details to our teams. Put your contact details, send your contact details to us. And we'll be more than happy to do a follow-up, even to provide for your baptism before you return. That's how we can operate in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Lisa, we have paid attention. And, and while we have Lisa, we know that there may also be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, there are many acts of the apostles to be done by you, my friends, not yet committed to Jesus Christ. God has a big plan for you. God has a great purpose for you. Just decide right now to follow Jesus Christ. So we go to the book, St. Matthew chapter 27. The Bible reads from verse 15. Now at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Prisoners aren't normally notable, so for you to consider him notable, it means that he must have been a terribly bad criminal. The Bible continues, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. I'm talking with you this evening about life's greatest question. You have been dating for five years. You have been going steadily well. And you really anticipate that as it approaches your birthday, 
the fifth year of your dating experience. In fact, you are at an advanced place. It's no longer dating. You are courting. And you anticipate that big question. He takes you out to a fancy restaurant. You're all dressed up. And you eagerly wait to receive the popping of that big question. And then nothing happens. And you're still waiting. We're talking about life's greatest question. Life's greatest question, there are many important decisions we have to make. Some of us, it is the decision to go to school. For others of us, it is the career or the vocation that we choose. Well, 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 yes. A very critical decision to make is the person whom we marry. Another important decision we choose to make is where we decide to live. And there are so many other important decisions that we make. Tonight, we're talking about life's greatest question. And even as we look at life's greatest question, I suggest to you that while these decisions are very important to make, they must be considered against the backdrop or within the context of responding to life's greatest question. In seeking to identify life's greatest question, we will observe that, one, you can be close to someone or closely connected to someone, and in this context, that someone is Jesus. You can be closely connected to Jesus, still yet you re reject him. The next thing that we should note is that uh, when Jesus stands before us, we must make a decision about him. I submit to you that when Jesus stands before us, we must make a decision about him. And thirdly, we will look at the fact that each of us must give an answer to life's greatest question. We're looking at the important subject of life's greatest question. And while we talk about life's greatest question this evening, I want you to know that yes, we can be very closely connected to Jesus, but still yet not be committed to him to the point that we reject him. You could even be attending church with Jesus and still yet reject him. I submit to you this evening that you should be willing and ready to follow Jesus in everything that you do. My beloved friends, it must be noted that the sad account of the condemnation of Jesus to the disgraceful death on the cross highlights the fact that the connection to a church or a religious organization does not mean that your heart is in the right place. And I should say that again for emphasis. The, the, the sad account of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ highlights the fact that it, your connection to a church or a religious body doesn't mean that your heart is in the right place. There are some church going, hallelujah, shouting people who will be burned in the flames of hell. I submit to you this evening that if you really want to escape judgment which really was designed for the devil and his angels, you must be willing to follow Jesus in all things at all times. That is, our steps should be ordered by the word of Almighty God. My beloved brothers and sisters, we should note that the Bible clearly states, according to, Revel to St. Matthew 27, or Matthew 27, verse 12, and when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. My friends, we understand that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he was brought to the judgment hall of Pontius Pilate by the Sanhedrin. That, that is the leadership of the church comprised of 70 leading members, beloved brothers and sisters, Church people who really should understand the essence of the coming or the nature of the coming of Jesus Christ, they never understood it. So this evening, you could be in a church 
and you do not understand the purpose of Jesus. You could be in a church and you are still far away from Jesus. How much then about those of us who are not connected to a church? Those of us who are not connected to the body of Christ. I submit to you, beloved brothers and sisters, the church where you go cannot save you. I submit to you that if you want to be saved, you should be willing to follow Jesus in everything that you do. Can I tell you, I, 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 I admire the leaders of our church. They have been serving to encourage me and to pray with me and for me. But while I respect and admire them, utmost respect must be given to God himself. So if God reveals a different way for my life, I am going to follow God. I am not going to allow my respect for men to keep me bounded or bonded. I submit to you that if God opens your eyes to new revelations, you should be willing and ready to follow where he leads. Be willing and ready to follow where he leads. Now, now, now. Now, as we look at this, we understand that not everyone, not everyone, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. And the Jewish, the unfortunate Jewish rejection of Jesus stands to rebuke many of us today. Be not alarmed that even some people like priests and elders who profess to be working for God are not living in accordance with God's word, God's will. And sadly, some of these people are leading contrary to God's word. Lest you forget, lest you forget, lest you forget, I say, proximity to Jesus will not suffice. Lest you forget, it was Judas, one of the twelve. In fact, Judas was not any ordinary disciple. Judas was a brilliant man. Judas, one of the twelve, Walking closely by Jesus, he betrayed him with a kiss. That's why we ought to be careful, you know. Not everybody who kisses you means you well. There are some people who may end up kissing you as an act of betrayal. That's why we are told in Saint Ma um, Proverbs 27 verse 6, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of the enemy cannot be trusted. That's why, beloved brothers and sisters, each of us should note and note carefully that not every... I, I was about to tell you that not every kin teeth a laugh, but I won't tell you that. Not everybody who smiles with you means you well. Not everybody who comes and, and pretends that they mean you well really mean you well. You should know that you should not trust human beings. Your trust and your confidence should be in the power of Almighty God. Your trust and your confidence should be in the power and in the word of Almighty God. I'm still talking about life's greatest question. So we understand that Jesus, according to John 1 verse 11, he came unto his own and his own received him not. He came unto his own and his own re re received him not. And this rejection was a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. In fact, Isaiah 53 and verse 3 suggests, and as I read from my soft copy of the Bible, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. So the fact that the Jews, they would reject Jesus, the fact that the religious leaders at the time would hand him over to be judged, to be punished, to be persecuted, the fact that they did that was a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Could it be, could it be, could it be that you right now happen to have an important decision to make, but because of stiff-neckedness, because you're stubborn, could it be that because of your religious tradition, instead 
instead of deciding for Jesus, you are refusing to commit yourself to the way of the Lord. Could it be that you at this time happen to be the child of God, the one for whom Jesus suffered and bled and died? Could it be that like the Jews, you are rejecting Jesus at this time? We're talking about life's greatest question. My beloved brothers and sisters, as we look at this, I, I am happy. I am happy, you know. I am happy. I'm really happy that I preached the messages concerning the unnatural practices that prevail among us on Thursday night. I'm happy that it was on Sabbath that I preached about the mark of the beast and the, the beast himself and how corruption crept into the Christian church. I'm happy that I preached those sermons before today. Because today, if you would be following in the newspaper or in the media, you would observe that the, the Pope has said that it is okay. In fact, there should be provision for male or, or homosexual couples to live together. The, the, the Pope has sanctioned that. You can check the CNN news and, and you will observe that the Pope has said that. Uh, the, the Pope, by, by the way, is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. And, and, and we must understand that we are praying that God's children everywhere, because God has his children everywhere around the world in different denominations. God has his children who may not even be considered Christian. God has his children everywhere. So we are praying that God's children everywhere come home to him. Against that background, we look at what happened even as Jesus was to be crucified, that it was church leaders in high offices that rejected him. It was church leaders in high offices that condemned him to death. Could it be that there are church leaders in high offices today before our very eyes are condemning Jesus, going contrary to his word? Could it be that we have church leaders who are leading God's people astray? Could it be that we have Church leaders in high offices who are leading people into sin. Could it be that we have church leaders in prominent position who go contrary to the will of God? Could it be? Could it be? My brothers and sisters, it's a painful experience. It's sad. It's dark. And it's lonely. We are still talking about life's greatest question. So we understand that you can be close to Jesus and reject him. The next thing I want to emphasize is that when Jesus stands before you, you cannot take a neutral position. Jesus stands before Pilate. Pilate senses that Jesus was innocent or Jesus is innocent. He, he, he believes that Jesus should be made free. And while he attempted to release Jesus, we understand that he decided to follow the custom of the time which allowed him as Roman governor to release a prisoner during this special season. Now, at that time, there was Barabbas. Barabbas was a notable prisoner, as was read earlier. Now, to consider Barabbas to be a notable prisoner prisoner suggests that he was a prisoner of prisoners. In other words, he was a criminal of criminals. In other words, he was really one of the most wanted men or he was on the most wanted list. And if you were to carefully analyze it, people on wanted lists are really not wanted. In other words, you don't want to have those people in your company. You don't want to have those people in your homes. You want to stay clear of those people. Barabbas is the one who raped their mothers and their daughters. Barabbas is the one who stole their goods and threatens their lives. Barabbas was a threat to destabilizing the economy. Barabbas was considered to be a tyrannical leader who in fact wanted to usurp 
the leaders at the time. Barabbas was a well-known criminal. That was Barabbas. And yet, even though Barabbas was of such description, yet even though Barabbas was of such notoriety, beloved brothers and sisters, the Bible makes it clear that Pilate, being careful of what he decided to do, he considers the options. But while he is considering the options, his wife sends a message to him saying, please, 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 Stay clear of that innocent man named Jesus. So Pilate was convinced, not just within himself, but also by the message he received from his wife. He knew that Jesus was innocent. So in an attempt to release Jesus, he said, you know what? Barabbas is here. Nobody likes Barabbas. They know Barabbas is a criminal. He is guilty of so many crimes, we can't find enough book to write down the records. That's how bad Barabbas is. And in as much as they knew who Barabbas was, Pilate gives the option. Pilate says, which of the two would you have me release unto you? Jesus, who is called the Christ. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, who is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Jesus or Barabbas. And yet the people at the time, having been persuaded by the church leaders. You know, church, I, I'm not cursing church. I'm just helping you to know that there can be a time when church goes contrary to the word of God. And so I'm asking you not to follow the preacher. Follow the word of God. And if the word of God convicts you in your heart, decide to follow Jesus right now. Your church can be a problem in your life, you know. Your church can be a problem. The, 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 I... I know that some people are innocent with their walk. A good friend of mine messaged me on Sabbath afternoon to say, wonderful and powerful message. But yet the person was concerned that I was suggesting that only Seventh-day Adventists will make it to the kingdom. That's not the message. The message is that Jesus wants to save you from your sin. The message is that Jesus wants you to do what is right. So if you're in a church that's not doing the right thing, you need to step out and follow what Jesus says. That's the word to you tonight. And, 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 and please understand, I know that there are some people who may not be church folk. But wherever you are and you're not living in accordance with the word of Jesus Christ, you should step out and follow the word of righteousness. That's the word that Jesus has sent to you this evening. So here we have it. That Barabbas or Jesus. Which of the two would you have that I release unto you? And they cry for Barabbas. And then Pilate asked, what shall I do then with Jesus? Which is called Christ. What shall I do then? With Jesus, which is called Christ. I submit to you that the question asked by Pilate, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ, was the most important question of his life. Not just as a man, not just as Roman governor, but as a man. Because each person has to contend with that all-important question. What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? And as the question is asked, the mob yells, crucify him, crucify him. And tonight the same question is asked of you. What shall I do? What shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? I submit then that the position you take can lead to the suffering or the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 26 to 31 of St. Matthew chapter 27. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And, he, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The Bible continues. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. 
And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put, him, put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, G Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. So look at this now. Barabbas is set free. Jesus is to be crucified. Jesus, the one who spoke and it was done. The one who commanded and he stood fast. Jesus. Jesus who is the I am that I am. The one who was before there was the beginning. Jesus. It is Jesus. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Jesus. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus. For his name shall be so called because he shall save his people from their sins, Jesus. Jesus, the bread of life, Jesus, the water of life, Jesus, the balm in Gilead, Jesus, the resurrection and the life. It is Jesus who stands before them. And there it is, sinful human beings would have the gall and the audacity to spit their coronavirus-infected saliva on Jesus. They had the audacity to spit their tuberculosis-infected saliva on Jesus. They had the gall to spit their alitosis saliva on Jesus. They had the goal to spit upon Jesus. They had the audacity to mock him by plaiting a crown of thorns and putting it on his head and to say, Hail Jesus, King of the Jews. But I'm here tonight to let you know that Jesus is not just the King of the world. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the King of Kings and the mighty Lord of Lords. Jesus is the way maker, miracle worker, problem solver, burden bearer. Jesus is all that we need. So we have Jesus standing before them. They whip him. They beat him. They whip him until his back looks like raw meat. Until ribbons of, until strands of flesh like ribbon hang from his back. Jesus, the son of God, writhing in agony beneath the burden of the 300 pound cross. He makes his way he makes his way. He makes his way to Golgotha's hill. But I thank God that there was a black man named Simon of Cyrene who came to help him bear the weight of the cross. My beloved brothers and sisters, oh Jesus, the sinless son of God, he makes his way. Yes, with blood dripping from his back. Yes, with pain pinching every nerve. Jesus makes his way to Golgotha's hill. So Jesus makes his way to Golgotha's hill. And they nail him at the wrist. Right here. With some rusty nails on that cross. They put his feet across. And they nailed him through the ankles. My beloved brothers and sisters, if that was bad, think again. It gets even worse. So they nail him to the cross. And after nailing him to the cross, they have a hole which is prepared for that cross. So they hoist the cross and then they thrust it in the hole. And as Jesus is thrust on the cross, his body bearing against the nails. His body writhing in pain and agony and agony and agony and agony. And yes, they have the gall to say, 
He saved him others. Why can't he save himself? He saved others. Why can't he save himself? And yes, there's a songwriter who sang, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and, and set him free. But I declare to you, somebody else said that he needed not to have called 10,000 angels. All he needed to have done was to call Gabriel. But tonight, I declare to you, he never had to call Gabriel. The life-giving Lord and the death-conquering Savior could have spoken to those inanimate nails. And immediately, those nails could have jumped from his body. The life-giving Lord and the death-conquering Savior could have levitated above the crowd all in his strength and by his own power. He could have come down by his strength. He could have come down by his power. He could have declared that he has the power over everything in the world. But while he was there on the cross, you, my friend, you, my friend, yes, you, you were on his mind. Jesus could not come down. He could not come down because he saw that there would be a sin drenched sinner in Montego Bay in need of salvation. He saw that someone was about to hang himself in Portland and he could not come down. He could not come down because he saw that your coronavirus infected mother and grandmother Father and grandfather needed a savior. He could not come down because he saw that boy who was abused and refused. He saw that girl who was raped and left for dead. Jesus saw you suffering in sin. He saw that adultery committing husband, that adultery committing wife, that fornicator. He saw that unnatural behavior like homosexual he saw you while he was on the cross he saw some false preaching preachers in need of redemption he saw some sabbath breaking saints anticipating their transformation jesus when I was on the cross he saw you in your situation he saw you right where you are Wondering what to do. He saw you deciding whether or not you should leave the work and, and serve the Lord as you keep the Sabbath day holy. Jesus saw you in your position. He saw you and he decided to die for you. It was after he did this that he suffered the death of the cross. He died on Calvary's cross. So Jesus, the Son of God, came. He paid the penalty for your sin and mine. We're still talking about life's greatest question. Life's greatest question. As we look at this, I want us to note that each of us must answer life's greatest question. What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? For as much as the mob yelled, crucify him, Crucify him. I'm happy that inasmuch as he came to his own and his own has received him not long ago, Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 53 verses 4 to 7. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. I want to let you know, beloved brothers and sisters, that even though Jewish leaders yelled, yelled crucify him and they made bad decisions to the extent that it had ripple effects you should be aware right now that you may be where you are 
religiously and spiritually because of bad decisions of your foreparents or even your parents. For this reason, it is of critical importance that you consider now what you will do with Jesus, which is called Christ. You may make a decision now that will change or save your generations to come. Be careful of the impact of the decision you make or the decision you refuse to make. Failing to decide to do the right now and accept Jesus as your Savior may not only affect your future, but also the future of your children, and if time lasts, your children's children. Be careful what you do with Jesus right now. And if God, through Christ and the power of His Word, has revealed true, new truths to you to the extent that you are considering making a new move. Make a new move with Jesus Christ. Do as he bids you. Follow where he leads you. Do what Jesus requires of you. I submit to you this evening, my brothers and sisters, that when Jesus stands before you, you should decide what you should do with him. Jesus stands before you right now. The question is, what will you do with Jesus? Jesus Christ, he is not just a little boy in a manger. He is a full grown man who suffered and bled and died on Calvary's cross. He was buried and I want to let you know that while the demons of hell had a celebration, somebody needs to know that that Sunday morning came. That Sunday morning came when Jesus Christ, the life-giving Lord and the death-conquering Savior, when he by the power of his might and that which was vested in him of the father when Sunday morning came the angel came down from God out of heaven with such great force that the earth quaked the soldiers watching the grave perished the stone before the grave was rolled away and Jesus Christ emerged from the grave with the keys of hell and the grave shaking them declaring oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory I can sing because I'm happy I can sing because I'm free I know that my Lord his eyes are on the sparrows and right now he's watching over me because somebody has got to know that if Jesus Christ is alive I have hope unending hope I have joy unending joy I've got peace Unending peace. And I want to let you know that this joy that I have, the devil can't steal it from me. He didn't give it to me. He can't take it away. I want the joy of salvation, full and free, to be settled in your bosom to the extent that you run boldly before the throne of grace and you decide to sing, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Decide tonight. Decide tonight. What will you do with Jesus? Which is called Christ. You're getting the link. You're deciding right now. You're deciding. You're deciding. You're deciding. Yes, we are always willing and ready to pray with you and for you. We're always willing and ready to encourage you to do what is right. We're praying for persons like Lisa Dwyer, who once walked with the Lord, but now ha she has decided, you, I pray, will decide to give your all to Jesus. So we have many persons like Lisa. Make your decision. We, we know of others. I got uh, a beautiful voice note last evening from one of our friends from one of the congregations in Kingston. She who taught a nursing student from Hanover. The, the, the nursing student sent messages about her seven-year-old son who has decided to amend his ways because he is serious about the business of his salvation. I pray that you will be serious about the business of your salvation tonight as you decide to give everything to Jesus Christ, your Lord and your God. Tonight is your night, your moment, your time to surrender. Jesus stands before you. Pilate, he knew Jesus was innocent. But because of pressure, he yielded to the pressure and he adjudicated over that matter which led to the crucifixion of Jesus. And afterwards, 
he decided to wash his hands. He got a basin of water and washed his hands. Tonight you can't wash your hands. Tonight you got to decide. You cannot leave this with your hands clean and not make a decision for Jesus. Tonight you can't wash your hands. Your hands may be dirty, but tonight come to Jesus with your dirty hands. Jesus is willing to take you with dirty hands and impure hearts. And he will give you clean hands and a pure heart. Come to Jesus right now. Come to Jesus. Sister Grant will sing as you decide to give your all to Jesus Christ. I gave my life for thee. My precious blood I shed That thou might ransom me And quicken from the dead I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What Thou given for me, I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell.
there any way you could say no to this man? You can't say no to Jesus tonight. You can't say no to Jesus. I know many of you are hurting, and you're hurting, especially in the context of the pandemic. I'm praying for our young friend who is going through a challenging time. She's on the verge of giving up, but don't give up, my friend. God will see you through. I know it's rough. You have had some tough times recently. We're praying for you that God will give you deliverance. And I'm speaking specifically about your case. I, I see your message which you sent me earlier. We're praying for you. We're praying for persons like Lisa Dwyer who wants to give her heart to Jesus. We're praying for you, my friend, who are going through a rough time now in COVID-19 crisis. It's difficult. You don't have the means to take care of your children. The bills are mounting up. It's challenging. We're praying for you that God will give you the breakthrough. We're praying for you. We're praying for you who once had that deep fire burning in your bosom. But for some reason the fire has grown, has gotten out and the heat has gotten low. Tonight we're praying for you. We're praying for you that while you seek to follow the Lord you will break loose from the tradition of men. You will know that not every person who leads in church is leading according to the word of God. So you should strive to follow not so much church leaders, but the word of God. God perhaps has revealed new truths for you. During this series, you know that it's always right to follow Jesus and Jesus kept the Sabbath day holy. But you have family traditions, you have strong connections, you have your old friends in your church and for some reason you are finding it difficult. Friends can't save you, church can't save you. Just follow Jesus where he leads you if he's encouraging you to change your course even as you demonstrate your faith. You're following Jesus tonight. You're deciding to answer life's greatest question as you choose to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior from sin, you're acknowledging Him as Lord of all. Note, if He's not Lord of all, He is not Lord at all. So you're giving Jesus your all tonight. It's you giving Jesus your all because you know that you were on His mind when He died on Calvary's cross. Pastor Oliphant will pray specifically for you. That you will make your decision. That you will turn to Jesus. That you who happen to be wondering what to do with Jesus right now. You will surrender everything. God bless you. Creator God. We pause this minute to lift up before you each individual who is weighing between salvation and your damnation. And Lord, that passage that our evangelists use this evening in the judgment hall of Pilate, while he is seated on his judgment seat, his wife would have come to him and said to him, have nothing to do with this man. For I have suffered much this day in a dream because of him. God of grace, there are many individuals tonight who you're using to reach through to others. But the pilot in us is resisting. There are many who, Almighty Father, who surround us, who you have sent with a word to deliver us from damnation. But our ego and the crowd are preventing us. There are many, Almighty Father, who are near 
precious and dear to our hearts who you've given a word of warning but because we are bent in our own way because we are stubborn and refuse to surrender ourselves to you we go on the path of destruction so this night in the name of Jesus Christ you are speaking to the hearts of men and women, not to the hearts of stones, of steel, and of wood. You're speaking to the hearts of individuals whose minds can be changed, who you have gifted with the power of choice. And even as you have allowed Pilate's wife to suffer much, because of Jesus. We are happy tonight that because of Jesus, we do not have to suffer much. We are happy tonight that if we choose to serve you, if we choose to give our lives to you, we do not have to suffer at all, but we can indeed inherit eternal life. So for that one individual tonight, who is wavering for that one individual who is building up a blockade to his heart for that one individual who is submerged in his or her own experience his or her own circumstances his or her own fear his or her own insecurities i am asking you almighty father to use this experience of pilot Use this experience of the crucifixion of Christ to show someone this evening that the story can be changed and their end can be greater than their beginning. There are those, Almighty Father, who are questioning whether you are able to provide for them when they give up the source of their financial wealth. There are many who are questioning what will happen to them when they walk away from the things that you have impressed on their hearts. There are many, Almighty Father, who this night have heard the voice of God speaking, have listened to the words of God. It has spoken clearly to their minds. But Lord, there is something in the midst, something standing between them and you. Tonight, I pray that you may help them to make sure they on their pilot tonight they may be able to say it is well with my soul there's nothing between my soul and my savior so for those who are convicted for those who are convinced and who need an urging who need a support who need a further encouragement to press towards the finishing line Show them the end picture, Almighty Father. Show them that when they give you their rags, you will give them your riches. Show them that when they give you their sins, you will give them your righteousness. Show them that when they surrender their present, you will give them a brighter future. They stand on the promise tonight. They stand on Matthew 6, 33 tonight. That if we seek first your kingdom, you will supply everything else in its train. So for those individuals who have that one block, those individuals who have that one question or doubt, because of him, help them not to suffer. Help them not to go through the experience of Pilate's wife. But help them also, Lord, not to experience the fate of Pilate. We surrender each individual in your hands tonight. We thank you for the word. And we pray that the sacrifice that Christ has made on our behalf, this night, because of him, we will choose life and we will choose hope 
and we will choose a brighter future in Jesus Christ. This is our asking in his precious name. Amen and amen. Northern Caribbean University's flagship radio station, 91.1, 91.3, and 91.5. West Jamaica Conferences, WCCN, Cornwall Communications. East Jamaica Conference, West Jamaica Conference, Central, North, Northeast Jamaica Conference are prepared to ensure that you have a means of hearing the everlasting gospel again. We are thankful that you have stayed with us this evening. We hope that you received a blessing. We hope that the word of God spoke directly to your heart. And as we sign off for this night, I ask of you, make a decision for Jesus. Give Christ a chance in your life, irrespective of your condition, irrespective of your location. There is hope for you in Jesus. On behalf of the entire production team, the communications directors across the Jamaica Union Conference, the Let's Talk About Him Planning Committee, I am Omar Oliphant, inviting you to join us tomorrow evening. Walk good. And remember to stay COVID free. And until then, join us in singing our theme song. Let's talk about him. Don't tell me about the popular things. Just tell me about the king of kings. Don't tell me about the things of the world. But tell me about my God and his word. Jesus Christ, let's talk about him, let's talk about him, cause he's the king of kings and lord of lords, hey, hey, let's talk, let's talk about him, let's talk about him, let us go into his word. Jesus, I follow.